Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Lakes Open House. We're really excited that you're here. It's six o'clock now, but I'm going to give it about five more minutes for some more people to log on before I do introductions and get the meeting going. Um, as just as a reminder, as you come into the meeting, if you could please mute yourself. There's a lot of background noise that that happens, and it's difficult when people are speaking to when the feedback's going on from that. So welcome, and I'll be right back for introductions. This meeting is being recorded. 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 We're okay now. We're okay now. We're okay now. Okay, 6.05, so let's go ahead and get started. We have some participants who have called in, and if you guys look at your cell phone, you'll see a mute button on there. If you could mute yourselves, that'd be great. There's a lot of feedback coming from the 6088824234 number. Okay, thank you. Welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here. 
Uh, my name is Paula Cracknell and I work as the Aquatic Resource Specialist with Thurston County Public Works. My function within the department is to um, support the Lakes Management Districts and I also do a bunch of other stuff as well. But I am the person who our current Lake Management Districts, Long and Lawrence Lake, work with to accomplish work plans and to do future planning and to um, hold community meetings and decide what we're going to do to help the lakes that we're supporting. So, and it's a, it's a wonderful place to be and I'm happy that you guys are all here. And I also have on with me tonight, Tim Wilson, who's the water resources manager, and he will be driving most of this meeting tonight. And I would just, like to let you know that we have a lot of content to get through. So the structure of this meeting is going to be a little bit different from other meetings that you guys have participated in with me. Um, we will not be doing call out questions as we're going through our PowerPoint presentation, just so that we can provide you with all the information that we are hoping to, to present tonight. We'll have three breakpoints throughout the presentation where you can um, ask questions and have them answered. I would like for all the questions to be typed into the chat box, and I will help manage that when we get to those breakpoints. And with that, I'd like to introduce Tim and get this meeting started. Thank you, Paula. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, coming coming tonight. As Paula mentioned, and taking taking two hours out of your evenings. Uh, it looks as if we have pretty good representation from both Patterson and Offutt Lakes, uh, as well as uh, others attending. That's really good. Um, as Paula mentioned, we have a lot of content tonight. We have about 30 slides that we would like to uh, go over with you. It's a lot of information. Um, our intent is to, um, to make sure that all your questions are answered and that you receive the information that you need to receive. So if, if we find that two hours isn't enough tonight, uh, we will schedule a follow-up meeting uh, to make sure that, um, uh, that all of your questions are answered. Uh, let's see, so just, uh, just as a notice, uh, that you probably noticed the, the meeting is being recorded. So we, we are recording this. We uh, very, very well may uh, post this to our website. Uh, in the near, near future. Uh, so just be aware of that. Um, just a quick message on why we're here. So following staff review of the Patterson uh, Lake petition, the petition that was received from uh, residents within uh, Patterson Lake and the drafting of the resolution of formation for Patterson LMD, uh, Public Works briefed the board on April 20th, the Board of County Commissioners on April 20th. During the briefing, <clears throat> several questions were raised and commissioners communicated that before considering adding LMDs, that we needed to make sure that there was clear communication and um, uh, the community as well as the county uh, had clear expectations for what what, a, what an LMD relationship with the county would look like. Um, they also communicated that we'd be very clear on roles and responsibilities uh, for prospective LMDs, that we address staffing so that, um, uh, first of all, the board has an understanding of, of uh, what staffing resources would be needed to support LMDs and that you as petitioning community, communities understand that and what that means. Um, they also wanted us to discuss some questions regarding funding uh, of the LMDs, which we will uh, talk about tonight. So um, the, well, let me share the screen here real quick. Okay, so just a quick check. Can everybody see the PowerPoint presentation? Paula, are you seeing that? Yep, I see it. Okay, very good. I see it here. Yep. Okay. 
So just more on the purpose of the meeting tonight. It's an informational meeting. Our intent is to provide communities information on lake management organizational structures. Uh, we want to discuss changes in Thurston County management of lake management districts. And we want to set clear expectations for communities petitioning for LMDs. And while we recognize some of this information is not new to you, some probably is. We want to make sure communities understand what the relationship to county government would look like so that both the community and the county can have clear expectations. And just, um, I guess, before we really get going down this road, uh, we plan on stopping at, uh, at three or four different intervals uh, here to answer any questions that may come up in the, in the chat uh, section of this Zoom meeting. Okay, um, we also wanna talk about uh, the difference between new LMDs and existing LMDs. This is gonna be a very uh, important, this is gonna be very important information for petitioning communities. Uh, Oh, you might want to take it off speaker then. Let's see here. Hello. Just going to take a minute and if you are not muted, could you take a moment and, and mute yourself, please? This is Brett Trowbridge. Hi, Brett. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. We're just rolling through some information. Could you, um, do you know how to mute yourself for now? Um, I can do that and I don't intend to speak. I've already submitted questions, so I'll just listen. Okay, that sounds good. And, and we are taking questions and comments through the chat portion, or we will also check in uh, with participants at, at intervals and just uh, ask if there are any additional questions. Does that sound okay to everybody? Yeah. Okay, very good, thank you. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we wanna talk about the difference between new LMDs and existing LMDs. We've learned a lot um, from, from really decades. Uh, I think we've been managing LMDs for, um, if not more than, at least close to 30, 30 years now uh, in Thurston County. Uh, we want to, we need to have clear expectations and transparency. We want to make sure that communities that are considering forming an LMD or any other uh, lake management structure have their eyes wide open as far as what they can expect and what they can't expect uh, from, from the county uh, by going down this road. We wanna make sure that we're talking about defined roles and responsibilities, both from the county uh, and from the communities. We'll talk about that tonight. And then it's, it's really important to understand that new LMDs will be managed slightly differently than existing LMDs. So existing LMDs would need to consider some of the changes that we're putting forward uh, at the end of their 10 year terms. So um, for new LMDs coming on board, we wanna be very clear and set expectations. Uh, so we have a good relationship going forward uh, for existing LMDs we are going to be phasing uh, some of those changes in over time. And we're gonna be talking to those LMDs uh, very soon about some of those changes. So the, the take home in this, uh, I guess, is if your expectation going into the process is that you will operate the same as existing LMDs, uh, we'd ask that you please listen carefully tonight because, because there are some modifications, some changes and those are based on lessons learned. I want you to be very, um, very clear on those. Okay, so just uh, high level discussion topics for tonight. We're going to talk about organizational options for lake communities. Uh, again, I know uh, many of you have heard this uh, before, but we want to back up. We want to make sure that there's a good understanding on this. 
we want to talk about what an LMD is. Uh, we're we're going to talk about funding of the LMD, a little bit about staffing expectations. Uh, we're going to talk about a typical LMD formation process, including the timeline and the cost. We're going to touch on integrated aquatic vegetation management plans, which probably is not a new term to you. We're going to dive into the roles and responsibilities, again, for the county and the community. And we're also going to talk about administration of the LMDs. Um, and we'll touch on topics such as the advisory committees, county policies, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, we want to start out with just backing up and talking about the individual options for communities. So for, for the communities who uh, feel compelled to organize uh, to, uh, to, to work on their lakes, uh, first of all, we, we want you to understand that the county is developing a healthy lakes program uh, that uh, will have a bit more robust uh, ability to provide technical services and answer some of those, those um, easier questions, I guess, about uh, lake management, what the communities can do to uh, protect their lake, uh, pollution prevention, um, just good best management practices for lakes. If that's not uh, enough for the communities and they uh, uh, choose to organize, there are several different structures that are available to the communities, um, and, and all of them are a little bit different. Uh, lake associations, there are uh, a considerable number of these in Washington state. These are uh, basically formed as a nonprofit, and they tend to be a good structure for well-organized communities that have uh, a common interest, I guess, in what they want to achieve with the lake and um, and, and kind of that common interest in funding some of those activities as well. There are also homeowners associations, which in the cases of both uh, petitioning lakes are probably not a good option. Uh, these are more for smaller lakes with, you know, one or two HOAs that um, are of like mind and and um, and, uh, and can manage. Uh, you know, the whole perimeter of a, a lake within those one or two HOAs. We also have lake management districts, um, which you're aware of. Those are county administers, administered programs with an advisory committee. And we have special districts, which are self-governing. Uh, they have an elected board and those boards, elected boards have decision-making authority. So a little bit different structure a little bit different um, ability of the communities once once they're formed to uh, engage and and influence um, the uh, activities that are occurring on the lakes what i also want to point out and we will talk about this as we move forward in the presentation tonight is um, just a quick discussion on on the risk uh, associated with these so lake associations, homeowner associations, special districts, and all of those um, organizational structures, the risk is carried by the community itself. So that's very important. With lake management districts, the, the county is assuming that risk. And that is part of the driver for um, providing very, very clear roles and responsibilities and, and some of the guidance we're going to talk about tonight. Just one more thing on these. Um, it's important to understand that um, for a long time, the county has been operating our lake management districts as a bit of a hybrid. We, um, a hybrid between a lake management district and a special district. So while a lake management district typically has an advisory committee that, um, that doesn't have decision-making authority um, and the county bears all risk, we've really been operating uh, to some degree as a special district. And we'll talk a little bit more about that 
uh, on down the road as well. Okay, so uh, a lot of text here and I apologize for that. Um, what is a lake management district? So a lake management district, as mentioned, is a county administered program that is bound by county policies, procedures, and rules. The boundaries of the district are determined during the formation process and the district is operational for a set period. County staff serve as program administrators and subject matter experts. All the permits, contracts, and activities are managed by county staff. And as I mentioned, the county assumes liability of the approved activities. LMDs are uh, different from the other organizational structures. As mentioned, a lake management district is different in that it forms a county program and the county is liable for activities occurring under the approved plan. County staff are fully responsible for implementing the work plans and activities. LMDs are very different from special districts or lake associations, which are self-governed and rely on residents or consultants as subject matter experts. So a little repetitive there. So an LMD uh, is funded, lake management districts are funded through charges on lake area properties. Annual charges are attached to annual tax statements and are collected by the county treasurer. Okay, does the county pay for the cost of an LMD? So. The, the answer to that is no. The, the cost of supporting a lake management district is a responsibility of the ratepayers within the district. A proposed financing plan is developed during the formation process and should consider the full cost of operating the activities of the district. So for Patterson and Offutt Lake, you, you have both done a wonderful job of um, you know, taking a long-term look at what you want to achieve on the lake trying to put some budget numbers to that. Um, but it's, it's very important that as you are doing that, you understand that, that the cost for um, formation of the Lake Management District and then those ongoing costs, uh, both internal and external, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, are built into uh, your long-term budgets. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, bond and inner fund support. Uh, this uh, is a topic that um, has been uh, discussed at the board level uh, and is continuing to be discussed at the board level. And there have also been questions that have come up um, repeatedly from the petitioning communities on this. So we wanna be very, very clear on this. At this time, the county requires a $5,000 deposit before consideration of an LMD petition. This is used to support review of the petition and fostering the petition through the formation consideration process. Um, I, I know there has been a lot of question about that and there has been discussion uh, within the communities and uh, from uh, some of the existing uh, um, lake management districts about uh, the applicability of that $5,000 bond as it's called out in the RCW. Um, I, I will let you know that, uh, you know, we want to make sure that that's managed correctly. So uh, we reached out to our prosecuting attorney's office uh, with the question as well. And um, the feedback we got from them is that in their opinion, we are applying that um, uh, correctly and effectively. And, and so basically the way that works is with that deposit, that gives us um, a fund to charge against after we receive the petition from you as a petitioning community to uh, go through and do our due diligence and vet that petition out, make sure it meets the requirements of the RCWs um, to start to prepare a resolution for the board to consider and to begin to take that through the process. So the other side of this is um, 
uh, just to be clear that although the county has at time subsidized interfund costs, that is to say the Board of County Commissioners has subsidized interfund costs, um, there should be absolutely no expectation of this in the future and the board has made that uh, clear. We're going to open it up for questions in just just a moment. So what are the typical costs of operating an LMD? A typical expenditure budget for a lake management district will include staffing costs, including benefits, internal costs, such as costs for office space, equipment used, information technology, insurance, and other internal costs, which are allocated to all county funds, operational costs associated with the district work plan implementation, and professional services for lake activities such as vegetation management. So it's very, it's really important to understand this that um, the, the staffing costs, you know, are are related to the work plans that are submitted um, by the uh, communities and are um, hammered out, I guess, with uh, with county staff. Once once we have that information we will assign staffing levels um, to, um, to these efforts. What we are communicating out to the Board of County Commissioners as a general rule of thumb is that for each LMD that comes on board, uh, on an average, uh, it takes about a half of an FTE uh, to operate those. And we'll talk about that in, in a little more detail later. Um, with those staffing costs come, you know, uh, uh, the cost of medical benefits and all of the costs that it takes in uh, to support a, an employer are wrapped into those costs. The internal costs have also been the, the um, kind of the focus of a lot of conversation over the years. These are the costs, just as I've outlined here, of, of doing business and supporting uh, supporting the program. A lot of these costs um, are distributed out uh, using an, a, uh, a fiscally responsible and, a, and approved uh, process for spreading these out across all of the funds in the county. I want to give you some idea of what that, what that looks like. I know some of the petitioners are aware of this already, but for um, for the existing LMDs, I went back to 2021, the last year that they were fully charged for these internal costs. And between the two LMDs, uh, the cost of the inner funds came out to 7.2% of the revenue that they brought in. So as an example, if, if they were bringing in $100,000 in, in revenue in a given year, uh, they could expect to pay about $7,200 of that for these uh, internal costs that if you were not part of an LMD, you would be funding these uh, separately and on your own. Uh, in comparison, uh, just real quickly to some of our other funds, the cost, uh, the percentage of that cost for uh, the Noxious Weed Fund in that same year was 29.5%. So um, yeah, some of the funds are hit considerably harder than, um, than the LMDs. And then uh, operational costs are just, you know, the, co the uh, cost of implementing your work plan. If you have signs that you want distributed or if you want newsletters uh, created, um, things like that, those are part of the operational costs of doing the district work plan. And, and of course, professional services um, are related to vegetation management, algae treatment, any work that we have a, uh, a contractor come out and work on the lake. Okay, so just some real quick expectations for staffing the LMD. Uh, so county staffing for LMBs is determined by the county based upon long-term work plans developed with input from advisory committees. So some of that typical staff support includes, 
of course, the aquatic resource specialist. Um, uh, Paula's posi position is, is tasked largely to support of the LMDs. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Um, and that is the biggest proportion of the FTE charges to the LMD. Uh, there's also a much smaller amount that would uh, include some of my time, some of the accounting and payroll staff's time for you know, paying the bills associated with, um, with the LMD and, and paying, um, doing payroll for staff and those types of things, running monthly reports or quarterly reports to report back out on um, uh, uh, the funding for the LMDs some administrative staff um, support, and then just other staff is needed. If, if um, there is a project going out on a lake and, and our policy says that you have to have two individuals out there for safety, then we would need to comply with that and have staff available to be out for a lake survey or, or something like that. So those, those are the different um, areas that would make up that anticipated uh, 0.5 FTE. So another thing about staffing is that it's tricky with, with the LMD. So the increases in staffing, if we have a new LMD come on, those increases in staffing to support the LMDs must be done in accordance with the county budget. So we can't just add staff without the board's approval. So we would need to uh, do a do a policy level request, request additional staffing, outline for the board what that looks like in terms of cost and what that work would be for them to approve. So it's a, a bit of a slow process to get that adopted. And then it also becomes a, a bit difficult or tricky in that if a community decides that, hey, we want to uh, reduce our work plan in order to save money, the county can't respond to that very quickly like, um, like a consultant could or something. Once we have staff on we, and there's a change in their, their workload, we would need to adjust the workload throughout the, you know, the program or the department to make sure that, um, that um, the work is reallocated for that. So it's really important to understand that. Okay, a couple more points on uh, staffing expectations, um, just that patience is required. So just an understanding that uh, staff, um, Paula's position right now, while she manages the work plans of the LMDs as a portion of their annual workloads, they also manage large time sensitive projects such as river restoration. So um, when we develop the work plan for the aquatic resource specialist each year, we are um, balancing the work plans of the LMDs with uh, approximately 40% of the rest of her time going towards uh, river projects and other projects that are time sensitive. They need to be done during certain times of the year. They need um, a lot of focus during those times. So staff is not always immediately available to, um, to work on the LMD's work plans and that needs to be planned out each year. And so it's really important that there are clear expectations that staff will not continuously and always be, be available. And it's not that we don't wanna be, it is because uh, in order to be creative and um, try to keep the costs down for LMD management, we also have staff working on other, other projects as well. So I wanna, I wanna take a break here and just see if there are any uh, chat questions or other questions so far with any of the material. We have some questions in the chat. Um, we have one from Gary. Oops, sorry, my screen just one. Gary asks, you used a lot of terms without definitions, deposit, bond, interfund costs, please differentiate. 
Okay, well, let's start with the deposit and the bond. Um, so, um, so we are using those interchangeably, uh, Gary, uh, although the RCWs call out that the county may require a, a bond, um, when we, we have interpreted that as um, a deposit, a financial deposit, that we can charge against. So, um, yeah, so we have used those terms interchangeably. We have um, also gone out to legal to vet that and to make sure that we were um, interpreting that correctly. Um, so that's where we're at on that. I don't, I hope that answers your question. The other question was about interfund costs. So, Interfund costs are also often return, uh, referred to as internal costs. So those are the, basically the charges that other county programs, departments um, are, are charging ourselves. So um, if, if we need communications to support a staff, we uh, staff member, we um, we pay a different county department who manages manages communications for all of the department. We pay our portion of that. Uh, we pay for uh, equipment costs internally. If the county has vehicles that we um, that we manage through our uh, equipment revolving and replacement fund, then those are some of those internal costs that uh, or interfund costs that the community would see. Does that answer your question, Gary? I think a good way also with the interfund costs is it's a it's a percentage of, of the use for things like Tim mentioned and also office space and the printers and stuff like that. So um, it's for anything that we need to use in order to help your program run more smoothly. There's a second part of his question that says, you mentioned internal costs. Is there another name for the other costs or is this something different? Interfund and internal costs should be, could be used interchangeably. We have a question from Kathleen. She asks, what is the difference between a lake association and an HOA? So a, a lake association, as I understand it, uh, is typically formed as a, as a nonprofit. So it is a, a group of community members who want to um, manage in, in lake uh, projects uh, who can um, uh, register, I guess, as a, as a nonprofit and then collect funds internally to, um, to implement some of those, those projects. And we have another question comment from Gary to review the printed document of the new administrative rules and to have that available for folks to follow along with as we go through this. So the administrative rules um, we'll, we'll talk about later on in the presentation. As we are going through this presentation, the, the large majority of the administrative rules are, um, are going to be outlined and talked about. So basically the administrative rules are a portion of this presentation that we'll be talking about. Uh, as far as posting those, uh, we've requested today that those go online as soon as possible. So those should be available on the county's Lake Management website uh, within uh, very soon, probably within a day or two. Okay. And Thomas asks, what is the standard indirect cost associated with each FTE? Some uh, interfund costs are related to FTEs, some are not. So that depends on the individual line item. Uh, it varies uh, significantly. And I would want to bring in 
financial services staff or uh, other people that that are much more knowledgeable about uh, those formulas to answer that question. Okay. I can tell I can tell you as a proportion of of your budget uh, what your interfund costs uh, could be expected to be <laughs> within a certain range. And we have a question from Celia Nightingale. Um, you describe staff like Paula have other projects they're responsible for. Do LMDs subsidize their other work or just pay for LMD work, county overhead? Um, the LMDs do not pay for any of the other work. There's a separate fund that I charge to for any of the river work that's conducted. The LMD fund is only for LMD related work. And we have a question from Paula Lowe. When Patterson LMD is approved, will Paula Cracknell continue to work on river projects? Well, we will we will have to evaluate that when we get a little further down in, in uh, the, the process. For now, we have time built into Paula's work plan, uh, Paula Cracknell's work plan to help foster uh, the petition through the process if, um, if the board chooses to move forward with that, which we expect they may. Um, when we get into developing uh, expectations and work plans for next year, that is when we would have to evaluate the, the workload, see where the LMD formation process is and uh, adapt accordingly. Something we'll need to give. We will either need to reduce um, Paula's uh, non-LMD workloads to support additional LMDs, or we would need to bring on additional staff at that point. So a question from Rob P is, wouldn't the amount of FTE hours reduce post IVAMP? Um, I'm assuming, Rob, you mean reduce the IVAMP going forward. Um, so the IVAMP is, would be built into your first year work plan for any new LMD and the amount of FTE hours wouldn't reduce that. Um, my role would be to administer that, write the contract, um, get the contractors hired for producing the IVAMP for future work plans. So no, it wouldn't reduce, it would just be planned into that first year's budget. And Kathleen Nolt asks, is the county involved in a lake association or would they be bound by ecology policies? Um, the county is not involved in lake associations. Lake associations are self-governing. They're their own their, their own organization. And any organization that administers herbicides at all in a lake or any kind of algae treatment, they are bound by ecology policies for um, fulfilling their requirements for permitting. And Gary asks, once the document of rules and procedures is published, will that document be complete or can we expect more changes as we try to adapt to these new changes? The, the administrative rules are uh, complete as of now, <laughs> is what I would say. We are trying to, again, uh, ba based, on, based on lessons learned, uh, try, try to um, address, um, uh, address those situations, provide clear guidance, uh, what I will say, Gary, uh, honestly is, and we'll talk about this a little bit going forward, is the resolution of formation that the Board of County Commissioners will consider and that ultimately the communities would, would have access to and, and would be expected to understand before they vote on those, uh, do reference the uh, administrative rules. And in that, it says it's that those administrative rules can be changed from time to time. It's a legal phrase. Uh, so that if we become aware um, at some point forward that, hey, you know, we, we missed this, we need to um, set clear guidance or clear expectations, we would have the ability to address that at that time. But as of now, we think we've captured the things that we need to capture within within those rules. Uh, 
Uh, we have a comment that administration rules are based on best practice and lessons learned. Okay, so with that, everybody, let's keep going in our presentation. We will have another break for questions as we move forward. Thank you very much. And if you have any more questions, keep putting them in the chat box and next time we break, we'll get to them. Can I just check in real quick? Did you did we catch the callers on on the phone as well, Paula? No, oh, thank you. Do we have any questions from folks who have called in who don't have access to the chat box? Looks like we have one phone number here. 7543372 That's me Brett Trowbridge and I've already submitted my questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you Paula. We'll move forward here. So uh, next next question, and again, these um, a lot of these questions are going to be repetitive. These are coming out of directly out of um, a list of frequently asked questions that we put together and posted on our website. So um, so if they look like responses to frequently asked questions, that's what they they are. So what is the process for forming an LMD? So we're going to we're not really going to dive into this because I think everybody is aware um, there are many st steps involved in forming a lake management district. Included in the steps are a vote by the affected property owners and several actions and public hearings by the board of county commissioners. Um, community should reach out to staff for more detailed information on the formation process. And I, I think uh, for most of you, we've we've talked in the past about timelines and and different steps in the process. So I believe you're aware. If not, let us know. What voice do property owners have in forming an LMD? So first of all, the Board of County Commissioners must determine that the proposed LMD is in the public interest, and that is open to interpretation by the board and they would decide whether to authorize a vote. And that, that is where we are now. They are gathering information. They are making sure that you have the information that you need before they make that determination. The formation of a lake management district is contingent upon a vote of the affected property owners. Votes are weighted, one vote for each dollar of proposed assessment. The proposed district must receive a simple majority of the return votes to be formed. So I want to talk a little bit about this slide because this, this is a fairly significant change, I believe, in uh, past LMD formation processes. And, and uh, I've been with the county about five and a half years. So uh, this is the first time that we have taken one through from start to finish. Um, the content in this slide is, is meant to uh, kind of foster transparency, transparency with you as a community and to set those clear expectations. So uh, where does the community get information on the proposed LMD? Prior to any vote of the community, on LMD formation and prior to the public hearing, information will be posted to the county's website. And we will post that uh, on the website uh, with ample uh, notice for the community to research that, to read through that, and have a good, clear understanding of, of, um, uh, of what it means to form an LMD and what they can expect. So at a minimum, we will be posting the following information. Uh, we'll post the petition uh, that is received for an LMD so that the community can understand what the petitioner's intent is. Um, we will uh, post these frequently asked questions on LMDs. So much of the content you're seeing tonight will be posted online. We will uh, post the lake management administrative rules, which we'll continue to talk about uh, in this presentation. Those will be posted. And the resolution of formation, um, 
This is the first document that the Board of County Commissioners would, uh, would consider when moving through a process. The resolution defines what an LMD is and how it will operate. <clears throat> The resolution speaks to the authority of the Board of County Commissioners, references the RCW, and speaks um, um, basically to, to the Board's ability to form an LMD. It speaks to the validity and contents of the petition. So it basically attests that um, the petition was received by the county, appropriate staff has reviewed it, and it meets all of the obligations of the RCWs, but then it also speaks to uh, the expectations that we're talking about tonight and alignment with um, other county um, programs and policies and um, that the LMD would be guided by these administrative rules and, and rules and responsibilities that we're setting out. So, by doing that, we are putting forward information that one, the community can have a good look at and understand uh, what they're getting into. And, um, and the board can also uh, consider and document via that resolution um, wh what, what they are agreeing to by forming the LMD. So once that information is posted, we will make sure that the, the ballots that go out for a potential vote and any other correspondence that we share with the communities will reference the location of these documents. So you can expect when a community member gets a ballot in their mailbox uh, to vote on the proposed LMD, that it will reference back this website and where they can find information to become informed uh, about, about the LMD. So um, timeline and costs associated with the LMD, again, not new information. Uh, the typical process typically can take eight to 10 months or longer from the time the county receives a petition from the community. Um, as, as you are finding out, you know, it's been, it's been a few years since we've formed an LMD. Uh, the, the current board of county commissioners has not been involved in that process. So there's information sharing with them. There is a comfort level with them before they um, uh, will move forward with that. So we have to do our due diligence in doing that. And that can mean a longer time period, uh, but it's really important to, to get it right and make sure everybody's eyes are wide open as we move into this. Communities should expect the cost of forming a lake management district to be ten to twelve thousand dollars. So the five thousand dollars that was submitted um, uh, prior as a deposit uh, is required prior to that consideration. But you, as a community, should be prepared to fund the formation process prior to submitting a petition. So I will say with that, that as a lot of you are probably aware, the board is continuing to have conversations about that um, and what that should look like. But as of now, that is how we're operating. The ten dollars to $12,000 uh, is based on uh, the most recent efforts by special districts and, and um, uh, similar processes. So it's our best estimate of what the cost will be. Uh, will be uh, to move through the process. Okay, who manages the LMD? Uh, lake management districts are managed and operated by public works staff uh, who have been tasked by the Board of County Commissioners with implementing and managing a lakes program. You're responsible for carrying out the short and long-term work plans of the district while adhering to any permits, best management practices, county policies, state and federal laws, and ensuring the work plan is in alignment with other board approved programs. And we'll talk about those in a, in a few minutes.
okay, what is an LMD advisory committee? And this, this is a change. We have, the county has traditionally called these uh, steering committees. We are moving uh, uh, towards calling them advisory committees. Uh, the reason for that is, um, is they are advisory. And, and this has been a question that has gone to the prosecutor and prosecuting attorney's office at several points um, in, in recent years and past years uh, about the advisory committees. Uh, a Lake Management Advisory Committee, formerly a steering committee, uh, will consist of five community elected ratepayers who actively engage with county staff during committee meetings to provide input and information for shaping short and long-term programs and management strategies consistent with the lake management rules outlined by the community. It's important to, to understand this. Advisory committees serve in an advisory capacity and do not have decision-making authority. So there is nowhere in the RCWs that um, outline or give authority to the committees. They, they are not board appointed and um, they are um, they are serving in an advisory capacity like so, so many of the other uh, boards and committees that, uh, that the county has. Hey, uh, how are advisory committees elected and how long are their terms? And I want to back up and say we're we're into that portion of the presentation now that is coming directly from the administrative rules. So when we talk about the administrative rules um, for to a large degree, you are, you are seeing them. And again, those will uh, be posted uh, online uh, very, very soon. And I'll be reaching out to the existing LMDs uh, probably next week to uh, talk about these as well. So advisory committee members are elected by a simple ballot method distributed via a special mailing to ratepayers and administered by Thurston County staff. The first election is administered within 90 days of formation. Initial advisory committee members serve for an approximate two year term ending on December 31st. Subsequent elections will be administered by Thurston County during November of the calendar year preceding the expect expiration of the current term. Advisory committee members will then serve two-year terms. So these, these are based, the structure for these are based on successful relationships that we have with existing committees, uh, such as our utility advisory committees. We operate a couple of those. Um, our storm and surface water advisory board, our weed board, and, and other committees that we have good, good relationships with and uh, get what they need from us and, and we get the information that we need from them. Okay, so who manages the advisory committee? Advisory committees are coordinated and managed by county staff who manage the elections, create and distribute meeting schedules and agendas and solicit feedback on goals and objectives. Okay, and before we get into roles and responsibilities, I think Paula, we were gonna take a break and see if there were yes. any more questions. Yes, absolutely. This is a good place to break. Um, we have a question from Rob P. Um, it's following a plan in place from said contractor for the IVAMP, wouldn't the county's role be diminished? Rob, um, we'll get to that question when we talk about IVAMPs later. I think it would be, a good place for us to discuss that, if you don't mind. Um, and we have a question from Robert Jensen about voting. Is there a mechanism for a prior, but no longer like front owner to vote? Um, all of the votes are going to be for whoever presently owns the parcel. So um, if you used to own a parcel on a lake, then you will not have voting authority. And if that doesn't answer your question, just let me know, Robert Jensen. Thomas asks, 
is the ten to twelve thousand yeah. dollar estimated total cost, or on top of the five thousand dollars for the the bond. Our our best estimate is that the total cost of uh, forming the LMD, taking it through the legal process, is ten to twelve thousand dollars. So, not not additional. And Gary asks, does the LMD twelve thousand dollars come out of our first year of assessments, or have to be prepared before we can collect any assessments? As of now. Um, those costs are to be borne by the uh, petitioning community. So the way that would work, uh, Gary, is that we would um, continue to charge against the $5,000 that has been submitted. When we are getting close to the end of that $5,000, we would notify uh, the community where we are in the process and what our estimate is for uh, dollar cost for continuing on with that, with that process. Uh, so as it stands now, we would be coming back to the community for, um, for more support, financial support to take the question of forming a committee or a, an LMD through the process. Okay, the RCW calls them steering committees. How can you decide to change the RCW designation? We would have to look at the RCWs. We would have to loop in our legal team uh, that our prosecuting attorney's office, which has um, a, a, again made determinations on that before. So our position, our legal uh, staff's position is that, um, first of all, whether they're called steering committee or advisory committees, they are advisory um, and we just want to be very um, clear as to what they are and this was also part of some feedback that was received from uh, some of the existing LMD uh, members so if that is uh, a point of contention going forward we will certainly make for make sure that it is vetted legally and that we are not going down a path that we shouldn't be going down. Yeah, absolutely. And Celia asks, is the cost of bringing staff and commissioners up to speed on LMDs something the prospective LMDs are being charged for? No, um, no, any information on the lake, um, the, let's see, any information given to the board that is not directly related to a petition uh, or the work plan of an existing LMD is not charged uh, to the petitioners or the existing LMDs. So if we are coming to have this meeting tonight and giving this information, this is coming out of the Board of County Commissioners allocated funds for 2022. Um, so you are not being charged for that. And Paula Lowe asks, will the county share the administrative rules before they are finalized so stakeholders can give their input? No, the, the administrative rules uh, were developed uh, by Public Works uh, and they will be discussed with, um, with all of the communities uh, to make sure that we administer those in a way that, um, uh, that works for the communities, but we are not soliciting input uh, for them. And they are, um, they are about to be posted on the website. And Gibbs asks, if accepted by the board, will there be an outline formed to show the order of and timeline for events and procedures. And will bar or will there be set expectations be met and progress monitored? Sorry, there was typing issues there. So if accepted by the board, where there'll be an outline formed to show the order and timeline for events and procedures. Um, 
if that is for an outline of events for the petition going through, yes, absolutely. Um, we've already created an outline and presented that to the Board of County Commissioners at our board briefing that we held last month. Um, and uh, for expectations to be met and progress monitored, we are very much so um, following the, the direction of the commissioners by holding this meeting tonight before we can bring the petition forward. So the timeline will be revised. And Gary asks, you will be asking us to pay money before we collect any assessments. And this is referring to the cost over the $5,000. Yes, we are, we are operating um, um, in a way that has the communities funding the formation uh, of the LMDs. We don't have a way without board um, setting a different policy uh, to, to fund that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, and I think everybody's aware of, there, there are ongoing conversations by the board, um, but we really can't speak to that other than to say there are conversations going on about that subject. Okay. And Frank Kudick from Lawrence Lake asks, our advisory, are, is the advisory committee guided or mandated by RCW 3661 or is it simply a new county mandate? The advisory committees, um, let, can you read that question from Frank again? Sure. It says, is the advisory committee guided or mandated by RCW 3661, or is this simply a new county mandate? The advisory committees are, are not, as I understand it, guided by 3661. Um, there is um, uh, little, little mention in the RCWs about the requirement to have or manage an advisory committee uh, that I'm aware of. Um, what, what we want to continue doing, Frank, is to uh, have a good uh, relationship with the communities and, and have an engaged community, but we also want to make sure that, that it's very, very clear to them um, what, what that relationship looks like. And part of that is to, is to minimize risk and to make sure that um, the, the community understands that, um, that, that the, the county ultimately has the responsibility and the risk for moving these programs forward. Right. And Kathleen Nolt asks, was there a public input period for the new rules? No, there was not. These were, these were rules, again, that were developed by Public Works who were tasked by the Board of County Commissioners with uh, developing and implementing, implementing this program. And the rules were based on uh, le lessons learned and, and best management practices. And that leads into comment from Gary. Um, just to be clear, the new rules are being handed down without impact, without input from the impacted groups currently in the process of forming their LMD. This does not seem to be fair and equitable. We understand we need to fund our LMDs, but to ask us to do so before we have collected assessments seems very inappropriate. How do you justify this? And I would just like to speak to the first part of that question, uh, that comment, Gary. Um, the, the new rules, it's, I really want to just encourage you to think about it as we need to have guidelines to run our program smoothly. And previously this didn't exist. So the LMD programs have been alive and running in Thurston County for 30 years and have had various staff who've managed the programs without having any kind of clear path or expectations or anything like that. And so what this is, is it's, it's setting a clear path of expectations, not just for us, but for what you can expect too, so that we can serve your communities better. And so that's the whole impetus behind this is so that we can more clearly define what our roles are 
to better serve your needs. And for the second part of the question, Tim, um, perhaps you could speak to that. Can you read the second part of the question again, Paula? Absolutely. Thank you. We understand the need to fund our LMDs, but to ask us to do so before we have collected assessments seems very inappropriate. How do you justify this? Well, I would just I would just say that this is not new. This is existing policy. Uh, when Summit Lake went through a similar um, process uh, just a uh, few short years ago for a special district, uh, it was the same. They were expected to and required to uh, fund that um, that process. So it's, it's not new, it is uh, in light of um, any new policies coming from the board or any funding that uh, is identified that is specifically for this, this is our option for moving uh, LMDs and, and special districts forward. Okay, and do we have any other questions before we move forward? Okay, thank you everyone, let's continue. Thank you, Paula. Okay, so we are going to get into roles and responsibilities um, uh, of both, we'll start with county staff and then we'll get into the advisory committees. It's important to note that very little of this is new. Uh, most of this is, um, uh, understood to be common operating practice, although at times we need to uh, be reminded uh, of these roles and responsibilities um, for the sake of managing risk and, and just good, good smooth operations. So part of what we are doing by outlining these in our administrative rules and with you guys here tonight is just to document uh, and to and to revisit these, but um, at least uh, for the first portion of this, there is nothing really that is new. So in general, county staff is responsible for the following, and there's about four slides worth here. Um, first is administ administering the LMD under the provisions of RCW 3661. So serving as technical experts regarding all lake management activities ensuring best management practices and sound lake management decision making. We're gonna make sure that the lake is managed properly. Um, ensuring the adherence to all state and federal regulations and all county approved policies and procedures. Staff will ensure lake management activities are in alignment with greater county initiatives and guiding principles. So to continue that, county staff would be developing and implementing short and long-term lake management work plans and strategies. We'd be administering procurement and management of all contractors and professional services need to needed to carry out the work plan of the LMD. We would report annually to the storm and surface water utility to ensure work plans and messaging align with and support the goals of the utility and we would ensure reports are submitted to support the stormwater utility fee reductions as available. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, that bullet um, in a few slides. Just to continue, so acting as the point of contact for communicating with contractors and field experts, including state and federal agencies, that would be a staff responsibility we would manage financial activities and responsibilities in alignment with generally accepted accounting principles and county financial policies and procedures applied consistently throughout the Public Works Department. We would also provide quarterly financial reports so that the community can, can see um, what, um, what the rates are being spent on. And I think lastly, for county staff, we would maintain an advisory committee comprised of community elected ratepayers. We would manage those elections per the process outlined. 
we would uh, create and distribute meeting schedules and agendas as needed to support annual work plans and solicit constructive feedback on short and long-term goals and objectives. And we would serve as facilitator at all of the advisory committee meetings. Okay, so we'll get into the roles and responsibilities of the advisory committee members. In general, the advisory committees are responsible for the following. We would expect that they actively engage with county staff during advisory committee meetings to provide input and information to assist the staff with shaping short and long-term programs and management strategies that are consistent with the lake management goals outlined by the community. So we want, want you to be the voice of the community. We want you to come help us uh, develop these, these plans and strategies um, to, for the benefit of the lake. They would act as a liaison between county staff and the LMD community members. So they would be the, the voice that goes out into the neighborhood and, and uh, talks about what's happening out there. So they would support county staff in achieving alignment between LMD goals and work plans with all board approved policies and plans, including the county's integrated pest management policy, shoreline management program, and the Thurston County stormwater management program. Communicating with county designated staff, not directly with county managed consultants, contractors, or regulatory agency personnel, unless pre-arranged by county staff. That is a, a risk management effort. So they would also be tasked with representing and communicating as a member of the LMD steering committee, advisory committee, not as an agent of Thurston County. So I am just looking, did we have a break scheduled for here, Paula? I've lost track a little bit. Do I need to go down? Yes, but it doesn't look like we have any questions. Does anybody have any questions for the section on roles and responsibilities? And just, uh, just a reminder, we're down to the last four or five slides as well. So we will have some time at the end. Okay, looks like we just got a question in. From Gibbs. I understand that some of the monies are for county to take responsibility and liability for the project. Do they then provide any guarantees for the outcome of the work done and success of the project? Um, we cannot guarantee success of any project that we do just because the lake is a living system. Um, but for any management plans that go forward, typically what we're trying to do is to do long-term planning for the future. So if we do an herbicide treatment, we are trying to treat in a way that is going to minimize growth in the future, which might mean that we have to go and treat certain zones. It might mean that we have to use one of our county approved chemicals one year and switch to another the next year. It might mean that we need to spend um, several months collecting data on the lake in order to make a more informed decision. So unfortunately in the world of environmental work, there's no guarantee for everything to work 100%. Um, I always like to say about 90% would be the goal. So we do work very tirelessly with contractors and conducting research and talking to people at other lakes and all across Washington state to find out what problems they're encountering and what they've done to fix it. So um, it's a very dynamic role to manage a lake, which is something that we are always trying to improve the work that we're doing on our existing lake management districts. And Frank Hudick asks from Lawrence Lake, who holds the county responsible for budget expenditures besides the county staff themselves? The slides surely indicate an open-ended, untethered use of funds for related costs. Lawrence Lake funds creating a reactive versus proactive budget process where some costs are retroactively charged 
without the steering committee input. Lake assessments are supposed to be a fee for service, not another tax. Who holds the county fiscally responsible? Who specifically? So I'm, I'm really, really glad Frank asked that question. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I would say that our financial services department um, manages all of the expenses and, and fiscal responsibility of the LMDs and do a very good job of doing that. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the presentation that the county adheres to uh, accounting best management practices and, and policies. Uh, so they are administered consistently as uh, other funds and programs are administered uh, within the county. Um, we are um, internally uh, audited from time to time, and I imagine externally audited as well, but I'm not, I, I am not financial services staff. I will say that we have made a request for an internal audit uh, to, uh, to have our uh, financial management office at the county review how we apply uh, charges to all of our funds, not just LMDs, but all of our funds uh, across the board. So we feel like we do a very good job. And I think uh, that our financial services department does an excellent job of managing uh, these. Um, I would also say, you know, it's part of the discussion tonight and part of part of setting those expectations and making sure that you as communities are comfortable with this. And what I would say is if if you are not comfortable with the, the county uh, managing these funds uh, and working in the best interest of your uh, communities. That's not to say that there won't be mistakes from time to time or things like that. But if you don't feel like we are uh, going to be operating in the, in the best interest of your communities, then I would say you should really consider um, whether, whether this is the best fit for you because this is the, this is the structure that develops a county uh, that forms a county program, uh, and there's there's other options out there for you that that uh, you know we we could help you along with, and we just want to make sure that you find the best fit for you. Yeah, I definitely echo that. Thank you, Tim. David Summers asks, how does the election for the advisory committee work? Who votes? Hmm. So the way we manage these with the utility advisory committees is uh, administrative staff will develop a list. We'll already have the list from your, your process and your annual assessments, but they will develop a mailing list of um, individuals out there. Uh, there will be direct mailings uh, with, with ballots, including the names of those individuals who um, self-nominate to uh, serve on the advisory committees. We'll have an open period where, uh, where individuals can show interest in doing that. And we'll have a simple vote. Uh, we'll send that out uh, to the community. Uh, the community would send, send those ballots back to that same administrative staff. And uh, it would be tallied in the um, advisory committee members successful advisory committee members would be informed um, that they are on the board. That is how we manage the utility, utility advisory committees. Uh, and we've had a lot of, lot of success with that structure. Hopefully that uh, answers your question. There's a second part of his question. Is it $1, one vote? The petition, um, the vote to whether or not to form the LMD is $1, one vote. Um, but the steering, the advisory committee vote, um, I think would be different. It would be a simple majority of whoever was voted to be the, the part of the advisory committee. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tim. No, that's absolutely correct, Paula. That's right on. Just one, one individual, one vote. 
Okay. And Paula Lowe asks, is the LMD charged for the election process? What is the fee? So the election process for the advisory committee would be something that I would administer as the aquatic resource specialist and the cost for mailing out the ballots, the postcards for the ballots would be something that would be charged against the LMD. And depending on how many people are in the LMD, um, that, that that's highly variable depending on how many parcels you have. We have some mailings that are just uh, over a hundred dollars for the, the shoreline of lakefront owners. We have some that are over $300 for all of the members in the district. So that would be a charge that I can think off the top of my head that would be charged towards the LMD. Tim, can you think of anything else? No, I think that's sp spot on. It would be wrapped into uh, li likely your time to, to manage us with some support from admin staff. Um, so it would be wrapped into the time. We don't anticipate and um, that the management of the utility advisory committees has shown that this is not an overwhelming effort at all. It is basically a, you know, putting together some ballots and, and sending those out in a simple process. Uh, so we don't expect it to be uh, intensive, um, cost, cost intensive uh, mm -hmm. and pretty straightforward. Yeah, the mailings are usually generally very affordable for both of our districts. Um, we have a comment. Never mind. We don't have a comment. <laughs> okay, um, we can we can move forward now. Oh, we have one more question that just came in from Frank Hudick on Lake Lawrence. He asks. Perhaps I missed this when the 10 to 12K startup costs were discussed. I believe the IVAMP itself is fairly expensive and therefore significant startup costs. Is this an addition to the to or included in the 10 to 12K? Um, no, the IVAMP is not included in the startup costs at all. And we will discuss the IVAMPs more when we get to that section. Do you guys have any more questions up to this point? I have a couple things coming in. Um, Mark Nelson asks the state and county own lakefront property. How are they assessed? Do they participate in providing part of the original ten to twelve thousand dollars in funding? So any county or state parcel are assessed on the lakes um, on Lake Long Lake and Lawrence Lake. The the boat the boat launch that, that is administered by Fish and Wildlife. They have a user days, and they have the largest fee. For both of those LMDs, they pay over $16,000 each annually into the LMD. And on Lawrence Lake, we have a large county park, and the county park is a lakefront park, and the fees are about, off the top of my head, it's about $8,000 per year that the county pays in for that parcel. So that's completely dependent on who owns the parcel. If a governmental agency owns a parcel, they get charged just like everybody else, but their rates are different because it's based on users who use those parks. Um, and Mark asks if the county or state parcels are on the lakes, do they participate in providing part of the original 10 to, to $12,000 in funding? No. So the original $5,000 bond comes from the lake community itself and Anything over that um, would also be from the Lake community itself. Sorry, my mic cut out there. David Summers asks, is the county trying to prevent LMDs from forming? <laughs> We're just trying to pro provide you with information. And we're also trying to create a program that runs smoothly for everybody involved. That way, clear expectations can be made. And honestly, these administrative rules are not really anything different with what's in alignment with what uh, community members have, have described wanting in the past. And also, um, we are very much so just trying to clearly 
show you guys what we would provide for you and what we would expect back from you for, to form an LMD. Paula, thank you for that. And I would just add, you know, certainly not. We are, we are, we are not trying to discourage LMD formation at all, but, but it is really important to get this information out early and before the vote so that we don't find ourselves a year, a year down the road uh, with, with a different set of expectations um, from the county's perspective and from the community's perspective. I think that's really important. And I, th I think the board feels that way as well. Yes, absolutely. And within our other programs with the county, we do have set policies and procedures that we follow. So um, it'll be nice to have this one also have clear guidelines. And we have a question from Rob, Robert Jensen. Can we use the Lake Management District to confront the challenge of increasing toxic blue-green algae blooms? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we started a program last year on Long Lake to monitor phosphorus levels, and we are using the data collected so that we can build a model for the kind of gauging how often we're going to need to treat the lake. And that is absolutely something that can be done. We did an algae treatment last year, and we're going to do another treatment out there this year, hopefully, to be able to confront that issue. And Gibbs asks, would we be able to see the exact scope of work asked to be performed before we vote? Exact vegetation to be addressed. So I would love to respond to that, Paula, and just, just uh, say that the information that we are going to be putting out there is, is the petition. We, because we really, you know, the community hasn't dialed down more than that. Uh, with us that I understand. So we are going to give all of the information that we have uh, to the to the community to to dial into. And whether that answers their their questions or not, that that will be up to the individual, I guess. I would just like to add to that that as work plans are developed, zones are developed, field work on the lake is conducted, and we learn about what species are in the lake, what problem areas are. Um, those are the things that will drive the work that's done out there. So it's very, very hard to say, yes, this will target fragrant water lily. <laughs> um, you know, while that can be a species of concern, it might not be a priority for the advisory committee um, to go after that plant this year because there may be another issue somewhere else in the lake that needs to be addressed. And that is the thing about lakes management is that it is a dynamic process that is driven by um, the way the lake is responding. So for example, last year we had a really early surge of common elodea out on Lake Lawrence. It came up um, pretty much by the end of March and had reached maturity level, which is not normal. That does not typically happen. It was very surprising. And we worked very hard to make sure that all plans were in place to go out there and treat common LODA early so that we could get ahead of it. And this year, there's no plants coming up hardly at all. And that's what we're seeing in lakes across the county as well. The growth is very, very slow this year because water levels are up. So the work is dynamic and we try to plan for a best treatment for one year, but sometimes we just have to use our best management practices on the lake to, to change our plans if necessary. And Gary asked, the real answer to Gibbs is that one vote comes before we have paid for the IVAMP and see a plan. Okay. And with that, do we have any other questions before we move forward? All right, let's go ahead and move forward. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paula. And can you remind me if we talk about this slide that is currently up? We did not. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're getting to the end of our slides here, but uh, uh, basically the question here is, do other county policies and programs affect LMDs? And the answer to that is uh, yes. There are a host of policies and programs that lake management districts must be in alignment with. 
These include board adopted policies and plans, including but not limited to the IPM policy, uh, which manages how we utilize pesticides, herbicides uh, within the lakes, uh, the shoreline management program, uh, the Thurston County stormwater management program as well. Additionally, lake management districts must adhere to all other relative county policies, including but not limited to safety policies, procurement policies, uh, communications uh, protocols and policies, and financial uh, policies as well. So if the county has a county approved policy or if public works has a public works policy, the LMDs uh, have to adhere to those, those rules. Are there other rules or guidance documents related to the LMDs? So I think we all know the answer to this one, yes. <laughs> Lake management districts are guided by Thurston County Healthy Lakes Program administrative rules for lake management districts. The high level, uh, the headers uh, for uh, these um, uh, rules are advisory committee elections and management. And they talk about meeting frequency, uh, the roles and responsibilities of Thurston County, uh, basically verbatim from what you guys saw tonight, the roles and responsibilities of advisory committees, uh, same. Uh, talks about the annual and long range work plan development and how the communication and uh, exchange of information would, um, would work uh, to develop those uh, work plans. Uh, uh, they talk about the need for um, and the requirement to have integrated aquatic vegetation management plans. We have communicated to the Board of County Commissioners that any new LMDs coming on will have these before they undergo any vegetation management work and existing LMDs um, will have those updated within a couple of years to, to continue uh, that work. And then uh, it, the rules also talk about the conditions of the stormwater fee reduction, which, which we will talk about in a minute. Okay, and Paul is probably going to be able to weigh in and speak to this a lot better than I am. Um, but basically, you know, IVAMP, uh, Integrated Aquatic Vegetation Management Plans, are a term most of you guys have heard. Uh, this is the planning document for the lake. Uh, as I just mentioned, it is required uh, before any um, uh, vegetation management activities um, get going out on the lake and we are requiring that they be updated every 10, 10 years. So that's high level. Do you have anything to add to that, Paula? Yes, absolutely. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to add that the IVM really is that high level survey of the lake. So um, what it is, is we will um, put an RFP out for contractors. The cost for IVMs has gone up in recent years. So we will work with the Board of County Commissioners to secure a contract to hire one uh, to go out there and conduct the survey. So what they will do is they will document all plant species that they find in the lake, um, native plants, invasive plants, and it comes with a plan for what types of herbicides can be used to treat the, the plants and what frequency they would propose to us for the treatment. And with the IVAMP, it's really a guiding document for us to use to understand the lake better. And the exact plans for how we're going to treat is all going to come down to what the needs are in the lake. Community input is very, very important, um, which areas are treated. And we have to follow the county's IPM policy. We have a, a limited bucket of chemicals that we can use in lakes. And we will choose the ones that are best targeted per plant that we are trying to go after. So the IVAMP doesn't necessarily say um, you're going to treat all the curly leaf pondweed with, um, with Aquathol in June, and you're going to treat this other plant in, in August. It will have basic guidelines for how to take care of the lakes based on that. 
Um, and also the previous IVAMPs did not address algae blooms. And that is something that I can work with the contractor to see if we can get that added to it. I'm not sure how that will work at this point because we have not hired a contractor to do an IVAMP at Thurston County in, in many, many years. So we don't have direct experience with that. But for the IVAMPs that we currently have that are outdated for Long and Lawrence Lakes, that is what they are written for to help us understand what's there. Because it's also important to know if we have any rare plants we need to look out for too, because we don't want to be treating in areas where there's a plant that we're trying to encourage vegetation and manage that in a way that's going to help it grow. So it's, it's a really good document just for us to use in order to develop really sound management plans that follow best management practices. Thank you, Paula. That was really good. Anything else, else on the IVAMPs? Um, do you want to take some questions here? Well, no, let's roll right through. And I'm sorry I was distracted. Somebody just came to my door at, in, at 7.41 at night. So that <laughs> okay. distracted me a little bit. So let me move on. OK. OK, so um, several times in this presentation, we we referenced the storm and surface water utility fee reduction. So I wanted to uh, take a minute and just talk talk about that and the expectations for that. This is really nothing, again, nothing new. Uh, the current LMDs are operating um, uh, for the most part uh, under uh, these new requirements. So, so basically, um, per current Thurston County code, uh, rate payers of lake management districts are eligible to receive a storm and surface water fee reduction of 50% or the amount of the charge from the district, whichever is less, provided the district is actively engaged in projects and programs uh, which have water quality improvement as a primary goal and align with county water quality goals and messaging. So this is a way that um, LMDs or special districts as well can receive some benefit from organizing. Most of you are probably aware if you look at your annual tax statements, you will have a line on there that is for uh, the stormwater utility and for an average residential home uh, um, on the lake, you would be looking typically somewhere in uh, in, in a fee annual fee that's a little over a hundred dollars. So basically what this code calls out is that if you are um, within an LMD, you can receive um, a, a, a reduction in that stormwater utility fee of 50% of the amount of your district charge. So, but it cannot exceed your stormwater charge. So you can save some money here. Um, the way this is administered and will be administered is during the annual uh, development of the work plan for the LMD, staff would um, have a look at that. They would make sure that the activities that are happening uh, within the LMD's work plan align with the stormwater utilities uh, goals. So are we, is there a portion of uh, the LMD work plan that works on uh, best management practices for, for communities to uh, manage their yards and manage their driveways and manage their rooftops to make sure that uh, pollutants stay out of the lake. Um, staff will have a look at that. If they don't see that connection, we will work with the um, advisory committees to make sure it is included in there and then we will add that as part of the work plan and then the last part of that is each year um, i believe in february of the following year there needs to be a short report that would be done by uh, paula in her current role and sent to the stormwater utility basically saying hey in the previous year um, we uh, uh, aligned with the stormwater utility 
and we would continue to approve those rate reductions for the next year. So it's just making sure that those common goals uh, and county uh, approved goals are also the goals of the LMD and then uh, administering that rate reduction back to LMD rate payers. So with that, that is the end of our slides. Um, we have 15 minutes here and I, I do want to say before we get into wrap up questions um, that if we need more time, uh, again, we can schedule some additional time. Uh, we want to make sure that that your questions are answered and you have the information you need. We also want to know how you feel about the information that you got tonight and so that we can report back to the, the board. Um, um, any comments that we received from you so they, they can determine for themselves where we are on, on those common expectations. Um, so with that, I would open it up for any, any questions. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I will just go through the questions in the chat before we open up the floor. And um, we have a question from Rob, can a lake association hire the same professionals as Thurston County can? Yes, um, any of the contractors can be hired by any lake association, SED, LMD. Um, it's just the process of administering the contracts and the, the legal way that process that we have to follow is done differently throughout the county. But yes, absolutely, that can be done with any kind of lake association. Frank Hudick asks approximate cost for an IVAMP. Um, we have reached out to some contractors and the mean cost is about $40,000, but it's entirely dependent on the size of the lake. So we have a pretty big difference between the size of Lake Lawrence compared to Offutt Lake. So um, that the exact amount will not be determined until we get closer to the, to creating an IVAMP. But 40,000 seems to be the mean right now. And he also says blue green algae is a public health and safety issue, it must be in the IVAMP. Previous IVAMPs have addressed vegetation only. And I cannot speak with confidence about whether or not we can add blue green algae into an IVAMP at this point. Um, Gibbs asks in all caps <laughs> what I'm hearing is positively maybe. What I want to hear is that the vegetation that's starving out our lake and the lily pads keeping us from getting to our docks will be eradicated and we don't have to hand out a blank check to get there. Is that too much to ask? Definitely not too much to ask. I can sense your frustration in your comment here, but um, all the we can guarantee is that we're going to manage in the best way that we can and yes, we do have senescence or we, we have reduced a lot of the plant species in lakes through using herbicides, but it is an ongoing management practice that we have to use and we have to reevaluate each year to do uh, what we think is going to work best. And that's pretty much just how it goes. Um, we've had years that have been great success. We've had years that have been failures. It's not easy to predict exactly how an herbicide treatment is going to play out. So with that, I would just like to answer that we can do our very best to manage the vegetation that we can. Paula, can I, can I just add to that too, that uh, the expectation, and I know that most people are tracking on this and not implying that this isn't understood, but I, I just want to be clear that um, the expectation should not be that we have we have a bathtub out there, right? That we are not eliminating all the veg, vegetation, which has an important role in the, the the health of the lake as well. Right. We need to create a balance. Right. And things can get out of balance in either direction. Um, I fully understand the water quality issues that come along with excess vegetation. There can be really extreme water quality issues for lakes that are, have high nutrient levels, um, higher water temperatures, it can choke out the fish because dissolved oxygen levels go down, but also there needs to be a balance of vegetation out there too. So what we are trying to achieve is a balance in the best way that we can in, and the way that we will manage it. We'll use the IVAMP as the guiding strategy, so to speak, but we will absolutely fine tune the strategy 
year by year based on what we're seeing and also what the needs of the communities is. Um, Paula asks, now that we've had this meeting, can we move forward with the past and late process with the county commissioners? Uh, Paul, Paula, I would just, um, we are planning on briefing uh, the board of county commissioners on um, the funding topic and some of the questions that came from that next week. Uh, we will probably very likely be asked to provide some feedback on um, kind of the, the pulse of the community following this and, and where, uh, if, if we feel that um, the, the communities have a clear expectation as far as what an LND is. So I guess I would want to hear from, from, from the participants here tonight, you know, how, how they're feeling about it and, um, you know, get some feedback as far as that goes. So we'll open the floor to you guys now, if you have any comments on what Tim just said. Are you up opening that up for chat comments, Paula? Is that what you're looking for? Chat comments. Um, you can feel free to unmute yourself at this point that the presentation's over. If you would rather talk directly to the group. And thank you for being patient with the chat comments. I just wanted to make sure we could get through this. I would also like to, if we have time before eight o'clock, we do have some questions from Mr. I am so sorry. Uh, Brett. And Brett, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your last name. Um, Brett okay, very good. Thank, thank you. Um, and I don't, I haven't looked at these questions, so I don't know if we'll be able to answer them, but uh, I would like to get them read into this, this presentation, if that's okay. Uh, so question number one, and Brett, correct me if I misspeak here, all prior proposals on Patterson Lake have had conservancy zones. Both Long Lake and Hicks Lake have historically used conservancy zones. Why doesn't this proposal include them? Is it now county policy that conservancy zones are no longer required for such lake projects? Do you really intend to kill every plant in the lake? Sorry. Can I, can I yeah. answer that, Tim? Please, Paula. That's a really good question. And I'm very glad that you asked this because there is a difference between the lake assessment categories and the permit. So the conservancy zones that are in Long and Lawrence Lake, there are pretty big conservancy zones that we've mapped out where we don't do any treatment and that's to comply with our permit. So we can't do a blanket treatment of the entire lake. We have to adhere to the amount of acres that we can treat, which is 45 acres in Lake Lawrence. Um, we have up to 90 acres in Long Lake that we can treat and the conservancy areas are very important. And that's something that the IVAMP will also point out because if there are species of concern in a certain area where we will not want to do an herbicide treatment, then that will be part built into the conservancy areas that we'll map out when we apply for a Department of Ecology permit to cover applications in Patterson Lake. So absolutely, the, we, the goal for the county absolutely is not to go out there and, and kill everything and treat anywhere. These zones are very well thought out and planned. Thank you, Paula. Uh, the next question, says, we have been told how much we will be charged for this project, and we know it is proposed to last 10 years. We are told we will receive both alum treatments with buffer and herbicides. How often will these treatments occur during the 10-year period? How often do they occur on Long Lake? And if we don't have an immediate answer to that, we can, we can get back to Brett on that, but I want to make sure it's read in. Um, I can I can generally answer your question. So the herbicide treatments would be planned year to year based on the needs of the lake. That changes. 
So in 2021, we did not do any herbicide treatments on Long Lake. We did a little bit of lily pad treatment and that's all. We didn't do any submerged weed treatments. Um, that is something that comes with the work plan and what, what needs to happen. What we did do is we responded to a very large scale algae bloom and we did an LM treatment. We were able to um, do some research and, and find a contractor that could do it within the budget. So the alum treatments or phosphorus mitigation is directly going to be a result of what the phosphorus levels are, in the, are at in the lake and what we're seeing as far as algae blooms go throughout the year. There's a lot of planning a lot, a lot of planning that needs to go into that. And it's not something that is done each and every year. And it's specific, it's specific to the lake. So um, we have generally done herbicide treatments pretty much each year, but we've skipped years too. So um, this will be something that as we go into this process, if we go into this process, we will learn more and be able to kind of expect what we're going to see over the 10 year period. Very good, Paula. And I see it's 756 and uh, you might have to help me here. I am anticipating that since we had this scheduled on Zoom that the recording will stop at eight o'clock. Is that correct? It will stop when you stop it. Oh, okay. So it can go a little long. Okay, I'd love to. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's read one more of Brett's questions in, and then the rest I, I will address somehow differently and for the sake of time. It says Roundup is currently being used in Long Lake with the county's consent. Are you proposing to use Roundup in Pattison Lake? Um, we are not using the formulation Roundup in Long Lake. So we have used glyphosate in the past, but an aquatic approved glyphosate and we really don't use glyphosate much in the lakes at all. What we typically use for shoreline treatments, which glyphosate would be a shoreline plant or a leafy plant that's on the water, like the fragrant water lily. Um, Mazapir is another chemical that we use that works really well, has a good tox profile and is, is my chemical of choice. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So 757, I'm just looking through and I guess this is, um, you can you can manage this if there's any other questions, Paula, before we wrap up. Um, no, we just have some comments. Paula Lowe says they have educated folks who've attended the meetings and given newsletters out to their community members. And most of the lake folks understand the process and are eager to get started. We've had a five month delay too long. Um, I understand your frustration there for sure, but the process to get this to the Board of County Commissioners is lengthy and we are doing our best. Um, and we just have a couple comments. Gary's feeling frustrated and discouraged. Um, you can feel free to reach out to us, Gary, if you wanna talk about that after this meeting. Um, Brian's in support. Celia's echoing that they have been proactive in educating their members. Um, Frank just wants to point out that the policy changes are at the BOCC level and not delegated for approval. So no, we don't have any more direct questions, just some comments. And um, for those of you who have some comments from this meeting, please do reach out to us. I would love to continue this conversation. Do we have any more questions specific for this presentation or feedback that you could give us for how we can help answer your questions in a way that, that would be better or clearer? Do you have any more time to answer any of my other questions? We have one minute left. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so why is the proposed why is the proposed budget for the Patterson Lake project a hundred thousand dollars a year, so much lower than the approximately two hundred and fifty thousand a year for Long Lake budget, which also involves herbicides and alum treatments, as the two lakes are roughly the same size. And this may be a question for. 
for passing late. Can you repeat the question, Tim? Absolutely. Why is the proposed budget for the Pattison Lake project $100,000 a year so much lower than the uh, approximately $250,000 a year for Long Lake's budget, which also involves herbicides and alum treatments as the two lakes are roughly the same size? Um, I would just like to question that or answer that question on a high level. Long Lake has a lot of parcels. There are far more parcels on Long Lake than Pattison Lake. And um, I believe that the budget that Pattison Lake has drafted up is, is for the boundaries. Um, and Long Lake has several people within the boundaries. So a lot of folks have lake access out there. And that's the only difference that I've seen when going through and looking at the proposed map from Pattison Lake versus Long Lake is that there's just more revenue from more ratepayers. Thanks, Paula. And before we wrap up, it's 801. I see we have one more comment there if you'd like to. Sure. Listen. Paula Lowe, we need to start an LMD. There needs to be a better detailed booklet on starting it. We need more guidance. Yes, exactly. That's why we're doing this. That's why we have tried to restructure this. And this is hopefully going to be so helpful for people down the road. And that is exactly why we're here. Well, Paula, thank, thank you, Paula Cracknell, for uh, managing all the questions and, and weighing in with all the information. Um, I just want to, again, thank everybody for taking time tonight and coming, coming out, uh, hearing some information that was repetitive uh, a lot and maybe at times fr frustrating. Uh, again, I just think it's really clear to, really important to go in uh, to a potential relationship very um, very honest and, and with clear expectations. And that is what we are trying to do uh, tonight for the sake of transparency. And, and uh, we appreciate your engagement. If there is more um, information needed, as Paula mentioned, please do not hesitate to get a hold of either of us so we can answer uh, your questions. And thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.